Hello, I'm Bill Carlos and I'm the Sales Manager at Broadbury Data Systems. I'm joined today by two of our key partners, ASUS and AMD, and we'll be looking at how we can provide solutions to solve the problems we see in today's new reality. We li now live in a world that faces more uncertainty than any other time in our recent history. The global economy, new regulations, COVID-19, and how competitors are adjusting to meet this new reality are just some of the challenges facing commerce and manufacturing and all business today. Many companies only look to short-term fixes, but long-term planning is essential to cope with and thrive in today's times of uncertainty. It is not easy, but for these problems to be solved, we need to balance short-term focus, but take the time to build long-term strategies Gaining a competitive edge is key to long-term stability. Today, we'll be looking at some of these areas and looking at how Broadbury are working with our partners to provide the tools to solve them. This may be how we manage a remote workforce, centralizing the creation of creative content, or adjusting our logistics chains and manufacturing processes. Above all, they should be tailored to the business needs, remove blockers and create an environment that is sustainable and allows for growth. We'll start by looking at some of the projects we have worked with and the solutions we have provided to meet these needs. I want to share with you some insights in a few projects that Broadbury have been working on recently, together with our partners, Asus and AMD, who are Broadbury. Predominantly selling custom-made PCs and servers to the computer trade, Broadbury Data Systems was founded in 1989. Since then, we have significantly expanded our portfolio of rat mount product and now specialize in the sale, supply, and support of highly customizable industrial server and storage solutions. As a result, the company has grown in every aspect and become one of the success stories within the industry. Today, the Broadbury Group has offices in the UK, USA, Europe and the Far East, and due to our constant innovation in emerging technologies and an uncompromising approach to the reliability, we now list Google, Amazon, NASA and CERN amongst our customers and almost all the major universities. At the heart of our extensive product range are two flagship ranges, the Broadbury CyberServe range of servers and the cyber storage range of storage appliances. Both are built to meet the demands of a broad spectrum of use cases and are multi-award winning, having won best class accolades for their respective markets over a number of years. We have a close relationship with our key partners, enabling us to put together tailored solutions to meet the needs of our customers. We work just as closely with you to make sure we understand the issues you are seeing and how we can most effectively and efficiently solve them. I'd like to introduce you to Dilip Ladani, who's our GPU and AI specialist. Thank you, Bill. Hello, I'm Dilip, and I am one of the senior account managers at Broadberry UK, specializing in AI, rendering, and digital content creation. A few months ago, we were approached by a multinational semiconductor manufacturer who were looking to implement a multi-GPU AI platform utilizing CUDA to analyze their customers' buying trends, product placement, and marketing. Their then incumbent supplier provided a competitive solution, which caused issues on their platform when running all eight GPUs simultaneously and was also one U too high. We were aware that ASUS had a very similar scalable system to the one being supplied, but the ESC 8000 had one advantage of being only 4U high instead of 5U, which helped in rack density, which was a plus factor. But the major benefit was that the ASUS ESC 8000 could support all eight GPUs within the client software stack. Another benefit of this server is that it doesn't require dual CPUs to run all eight GPUs. This made more commercial sense for this project, 
as the application was more intensive on the GPU than the CPU. Apart from the eight PCIe slots, the ESC8000 comes with three extra slots for add-in cards like RAID and networking, and also supports eight hotswap SATA or NVMe drives. There is also dual M.2 slots, which we used for the operating system. The 4U footprint, running eight GPUs simultaneously, and the saving on a single CPU put the, a put the ESC8000 in pole position. They prefer the ease of setup from the BIOS to the installation, so much so that they removed all the incumbent servers and now have an all ASUS based GPU estate. The combination of Broadberry, ASUS and Intel provided the perfect solution and delivered the most cost effective platform to meet the client's tight budget constraints. So thank you ASUS and Intel for your continued support. I would like to introduce you to Adam Warsnop, a high density and HPC specialist. Thank you Bill. Uh, hello, my name is Adam Warsnop and I'm the business development manager at Broadbury UK. Today I'm going to talk about a case study of a recent project we worked on with ASUS and AMD for a large Brazilian ISP. The customer contacted us after browsing multiple servers on our website using our online configuration tool. The client in question was rapidly running out of rack space in the data centre and so Broadbury proposed a solution to increase their compute using 2U six node high density solution that provided high core count low memory capacity, high density, with low power consumption. We have a number of different servers that could fit the bill in this space, so after evaluating their requirements, I introduced them to the new ASUS RS620SA server, which features six nodes in a 2U form factor with support for, it, for the latest AMD EPIC CPUs. The beauty of this server is that currently there are no other six node 2U solutions on the market. So using this proved to be a no-brainer. The single CPU with high core count was perfect in regards to licensing implications, helping to keep the total cost of ownership low, which is a massive factor in the hosting industry. This server is two hot swap NVMe drive bays per node for high IOP performance. They are also after 100 gig networking and each node has one PCIe Gen 4 slot as well as an OCP which gives them options for future expansion. Being based in South America the client was looking for a supplier who could support them effectively in their region. The Broadberry has offices globally and we supplied this project through our 60,000 square foot build facility in Massachusetts and provided ongoing support using our worldwide network of technicians. By partnering with ASUS and AMD, we were able to provide a complete solution with the delivery, support and price point the customer was looking for. The customer noted that Broadbury website is the best quoting tool he's found. It's something we're very proud of having been developed in-house over the past 15 years and is being constantly improved by our web development team. I invite you to check out our online ASUS store when you're next browsing, where you can customise and configure the full ASUS range of server and storage solutions. And with that, I'll hand you back to Bill. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce you to Morton, who's a country product manager from ASUS. Hi everyone. My name is Morton and I'm the country product manager for servers at ASUS. And I would really like to talk to you today about the uh, way that we uniquely approach every problem that we, we see customers have and how we utilize the power that AMD is providing us. So ASUS isn't just servers, of course. We uh, produce a large variety of uh, different uh, products and we always try just to keep the same approach to every single one of these, which is to keep the customer in mind and make sure that they are not only produced to the highest quality, but also to um, our own highest standards. And we, we never release anything without having properly tested. For, for this, we have managed to be the most admired company for, the, for six years, from 2016 and 2018 to 21, which uh, in itself is quite an achievement. But one of, the, one of our biggest priorities 
is to keep a green ACES. We have, we have managed to acquire seven, over 72,000 individual green labels as part of our corporate social responsibility. And I want to show how we translate that into our products. So in 2017, we introduced the performance tuning team. And since then, we have managed to gain over 900 world records in the spec. We mainly do this, not only to produce the most powerful, but also to try and make the most power efficient service out there. And with this, we, uh, we have managed to grow this team. And in the last year alone, we have acquired over 300 world records. We have Thermal Radar 2.0, which we utilize to help lower the overall power consumptions of all our servers. So what we basically have done is that we have there's always ready sensors sitting in CPUs, you know, SSDs, and all the add-on cards. But we have added another 56 sensors to this. And we've also divided the service up into individual zones. And then what we basically do is we have fans allocated to each of these zones. And if one of these zones is running particularly hot, but the other ones aren't, then it would only be the affected zone that increases the power. Now, sometimes all power is needed, which is why we have uh, made this thermal radar be able to communicate with other ACES servers sitting in the same array. And there's not really a big limit on how many. So what we can actually do is, you ha if you have one particular server that's running on a heavy load because it's rendering your newest video, then uh, what it will do is that it can increase the um, fan speeds of the servers surrounding it to reduce the overall ambient temperature. And this will save you power in the end, because uh, as we all know, as, I as IT gets hotter, it gets much more inefficient. So we want to keep it as cool as possible while still reducing cost. Overall, we have seen that this lowers the TCO significantly, and we've seen an overall reduction in uh, fan speeds, or oh, fan power, by 36%. So lastly, we have the core optimizer. Now, this is something we, we have introduced because with every investment in IT, let's face it, it's not small. CPUs are easily hitting several grand. And uh, well, the same can be said to, see, uh, to GPUs and other components. So we want to make sure that everyone gets the most out of their hardware when they buy ACES. So with the core optimizer, what we've done is that you can lock in the, fre the, the frequency that the processor is running at, even on multi-core operations. Now this avoids all the shifting and, uh, and instability in, as the um, processor is suddenly not changing and this reduces jitter and lowers the and makes us allows us to lower the frequency pair that with the optimized performance setting this is the running joke that uh, asus takes a good time to uh, validate every single component going into our server <laughs> and this is true but this is the reason because it, within every single bias we have uh, made sure that um, every component will run perfectly. Yeah. You have pre-configured BIOS settings that you can use to, uh, depending on the workloads that you're putting into the service, and it, this improves performance and efficiency. So why, why wouldn't you? I'd like to introduce you to Sam Smallwood from AMD. Hi there, my name is Sam Smallwood. I'm uh, part of the field technical team here at AMD and uh, pleased to be with you today, hopefully giving you over the next 20 minutes a quick overview of uh, some of AMD's solutions in the high performance computing space and indeed the enterprise space as well. Um, high performance compute is at, at the center of everything we do today, whether that's at the, the back end of cloud services, right through the front end in your mobile phones, high performance computing is absolutely required in everything you do. Um, over the last year, we've seen a real shift in, in the workloads that are, that are required, what with uh, uh, customers and, and users being driven to work from home, uh, thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic. We've seen a real change in, in the way that the world needs to derive its compute power, and indeed AMD is absolutely the forefront of uh, of that um, that drive towards remote compute and high performance computing, indeed, uh, across the board. Um, 
Specifically in the HPC space, uh, over the last year, we've, we've, well, the last two years, in fact, uh, AMD has been uh, contributing to what we call the, the COVID-19 HPC fund. Uh, so we've donated $15 million worth of compute resources uh, to the fight against COVID-19, um, both in mapping how the disease is transmitted uh, and how it's spreading, uh, right through to um, trying to develop the, the vaccines as well, uh, which have been, it's been a success story across the world. AMD is proud to have been a part of that, um, and again, pushing forward that HPC uh, strategy across the entire world. Um, it's not just with the fight against COVID-19, though. Uh, climate change, the drive to clean energy, and indeed uh, fighting other diseases such as cancer, all require HPC for the simulation side of things, and AMD AMD is truly at the forefront of that, uh, that computational science drive. Um, when you look at some of the, the next generation global supercomputers that have been uh, announced and indeed are being deployed just now, AMD is again what, uh, at the forefront of what's going on here. So the Frontier supercomputer at Oak Ridge National Labs is currently in the deployment phase. It's due to be going live by the end of this year based on uh, current generation but leading edge AMD technologies, both CPU and graphics. When you look towards the next generation, the El Capitan supercomputer, the world's first two, two exaflop supercomputer, um, that's going to be going live in 2023, powered by, again, next generation AMD CPUs and GPUs. Now, while those are nice things to talk about, they're not particularly current generation. They're, not, they're, not, uh, they're a bit unique. They're based on stuff that most users can't buy. Having said that, there are plenty of other supercomputing ventures uh, more, closer to home that have been powered by AMD. So Lumi at CSC in Finland is a nice example, powered entirely by Milan, going live currently. Um, here in the UK, we've got the Archer 2 supercomputer, entirely powered by Rome, went live last year. Some real success stories going on, both on current generation technologies and on next generation as well. So there's real commitment from these global labs to AMD's roadmap and to the execution technology that, that AMD has right now. When you look at some of the back-end cloud services that you use today, um, the, the entire of the back-end of uh, Office 365 and Teams and Twitter and Zoom are driven by AMD CPUs. We, are, we own 100% of the Twitter estate. Um, so those services that you're using day-to-day -day without even realizing are, are powered by a remote instance, they're driven by AMD. And there's also the stuff that you might recognize in terms of the actual instances that you can, you can buy and you can rent. Uh, from some of the major cloud service providers. So, on, uh, so as of today, um, we're on track to deliver about 400 instances by the end of this year from major providers such as AWS, Google Cloud Platform, Microsoft Azure, and many, many others. So a, a, real, a real show of faith from a lot of the major cloud service providers here and, and belief that AMD's CPUs are the way forward. In terms of some of the challenges that face enterprises today, though, things are similar but a little different. Um, that shift to remote working that's been driven by COVID-19 has it's meant there's been a drive for new forms of infrastructure to try and support all those remote workers. All those staff who used to be in the office contained in one place and managed from there, not the case anymore. Everyone's working from home or from their local cafe and the infrastructure needs to back that up. There's now far more data in flight than there used to be. That's all going to be managed. There's an insatiable demand for compute with all this instance stuff going on. And indeed, security threats are bigger than ever. As soon as the, as soon as the user leaves the building, they are under threat from attackers left, right and center. So uh, keeping all these things in mind, uh, what's AMD actually doing to try and help address some of those challenges? Well. Specifically, we've just launched the new 7003 series CPUs, what we codenamed Milan. Um, by the numbers, these things are industry-leading CPUs. So we've got the highest density core count of any CPU in the marketplace today, up to 64 cores on a single socket. These are based on our latest Zen 3 core technology, which is a, a, a completely modern architecture designed from the ground up to be, uh, to be delivering high-performance computing in a scalable and performant fashion. We have Eight memory channels available on every CPU with up to four terabytes uh, per socket, which is a, a huge, huge performance lead just there. We've got more L3 cache available on these CPUs than we've ever had before, up to 256 megs. And indeed, the I.O. side of things is covered off as well. We offer 128 lanes of PCI Express Gen 4 per socket. What these CPUs allow you to do is change the way you look at your workloads. What traditionally would have required a dual socket server to run can now be done on a single socket Epic quite happily. You don't need to buy a pair of 28 core CPUs to be able to do this workload. You can do it from a single 64 core quite happily. You've got all the I.O. that you need. You've got all the memory channels and bandwidth that you need. These things can truly deliver those dual socket workloads in one socket environments. And we're going to talk you through a few examples of how that's going to work in the next few slides. Um, one thing before we get to that, though, that is pretty much at the forefront of everyone's minds just now is security. Every AMD device that ships uh, today has what we call the AMD Secure Processor built in. Um, this is an ARM Cortex-A5 that essentially uh, handles all the security functions of the CPU right from the moment the CPU boots up. 
Um, so it provides a hardware route of trust, but it also allows us to deliver some industry-leading technologies uh, into the marketplace, uh, in, involving such things as memory encryption technologies. Um, so as the, the Zen technologies have evolved, the, the, the core architectures of our, of our Epic CPUs have, have evolved over the last three generations, uh, we've kept adding to this security story and adding new technologies in, um, and indeed uh, the story will keep getting stronger with future generations. One of the biggest things we like to talk about is uh, our memory encryption technology. Um, so we have a technology called SEV, or Secure Encrypted Virtualization, which in the first generation with our uh, Naples codenamed parts um, allowed you to encrypt the, mem the memory space of every single virtual machine on your host. Quite a nice thing to be able to do, but with that first generation, it could only handle 15 VMs. Second generation, it could do 509, and that's carried forward to today's generation as well. With the latest Milan CPUs, you actually only need the hypervisor to be aware uh, of that technology, so now the guest no longer needs to be aware of it, unlike with the previous two generations, which is, again, making the technology easier to use and indeed more secure than it has ever been before. We're going to keep evolving that technology and indeed we're working with partners on this stuff as well. Um, so VMware have recently induced, uh, introduced um, SEV ES, the second generation technologies, into vSphere um, with, I think, version 7 update 2. One of the technologies that's being uh, driven hardest is, is the new Shadow Stack technology, which is actually uh, developed by Microsoft um, and has been put in place in order to uh, allow customers to be as secure as possible against return-oriented programming attacks. Um, this isn't actually something that AMD or Intel developed. This was defined by Microsoft and we were asked to put the hardware into our silicon. Both of us have done that for the current generation. So Shadow Stack is a nice example of the strength of some of those partnerships that we have and how they work both ways. Um, so not just AMD leading the industry here, but our partners as well, truly driving things forward. Um, a brief foray into the actual uh, the, the SKU stack for the, the 7003 series. I'm not going to spend too long here, um, but I will point out the, uh, the important thing is that all of the CPUs in this stack have the exact same features. So it doesn't matter whether you're buying the entry-level 8-core part or the top stack 64-core part. You have the exact same feature stack across the board. So you've got all the memory channels available. You've got the full memory capacity per socket. You've got all the I.O. You've got SMT, Turbo Boost, all the kind of core CPU and security technologies. Everything that you want is fully available to you, no matter which CPU you buy. We're not going to force you to buy up the stack to get more performance or more features. We don't have bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. We just have Epic. This makes things quite simple as far as customers are concerned because all you need to do is pick the CPU that fits your workload best and you'll get the best performance and you get all the features that you need irrespective of, uh, of what you're buying. The only other thing that's worth noting on this slide is that there are some parts that have a P at the end of their name. For instance, the 64 core 7713P on that second row there. These P grade parts are functionally identical to their non P grade parts, but with one important difference. Uh, the non P parts, so the 7713, for instance, will work in either a single socket or a dual socket environment, where the P grade parts will only work in a single socket environment. Um, there's also a significant commercial advantage to buying them, so the P-grade parts are quite a bit cheaper. Um, and again, it's trying to add credence to that story of, of doing traditional dual socket workloads in a single socket system. Not only can you do those workloads in a single socket system, you can also save quite a lot of money on the acquisition cost when you buy them because those P-grade parts are quite a bit cheaper. So it's, it, it's again, just making sure that customers are you know, made as aware as possible of this and also um, ensuring that it's kind of commercially obvious for customers to choose a single socket solution where it's appropriate. Now, moving away from costs slightly onto performance, because that's kind of one of the big things that matters, and AMD is truly leading the industry here. Um, these are comparisons uh, of our current generation CPUs against our previous generation CPUs, the 7002 series, and against Intel's current generation codenamed Ice Lake. And what we see here is that AMD has significant performance leadership pretty much across the board. Um, when you look at multi-core workloads, uh, we've got a 36% lead at the top of stack, which is a nice thing, but we do have a higher core count there, so that's a bit obvious. However, when you look at 32 core comparisons, things become really quite stark. Our previous generation 7532 competes squarely with Intel's 8358. They're both 32 core products there, so that's nice. But our current generation 32 core part pulls a 31% lead over the Intel one, and significantly ahead of our previous generation as well. So we're really not standing still when it comes to performance, and it doesn't matter whether you're looking at multi-core or single-core workloads, things are looking really, really strong on the Epic CPUs right now. That performance story carries forward. Okay, we've got what the slide says here is 200 plus current world records. Right now, that that count stands at 251 and counting. So we've, we're getting world, yeah, world records across the board with these things, and it's not just in uh, benchmark performance; it's in real world performance as well. So there's some benchmarks in here, 
but there's a lot of stuff that customers are actually using. You've got CFD, you've got you know, general enterprise workloads like Java, databasing, you've got HCI, you've got SDI, you've got HPC workloads. There's loads and loads of different things and, and all these workloads are very distinct and yet we're winning the performance story across the board. When you look at some of the, the kind of the ones they use most often, uh, the spec CPU suite is, is a nice example. And for the first time in AMD's history, we have true leadership across the entire 16 stack, or sorry, the 16 tests that are available um, from spec CPU. So again, these form a broad spectrum of tests for both single and multi-core workloads. And it's the first time in our history that we've had all 16 of those covered by a single product line. So the Milan stack is really very, very strong and offers performance leadership across the board. Um, so coming back to that single socket performance story we were talking about earlier, um, if you take a 16 core uh, CPU from AMD, the 73F3 for instance, and you compare it with a pair of the, uh, the current 16 core Xeon Gold 6334 parts, we see a quite interesting story come out. We offer more performance on the AMD side for starters. So we've got a 15% lead in raw performance terms, single socket versus dual socket. So that's quite a nice story to begin with. However, when you look at performance per dollar, obviously you're buying half the number of CPUs and they're quite cheap to start with, we've got a 45% lead there. And it gets even better when you look at performance per watt. So these things are extremely efficient when it comes to the performance they deliver per unit power. And indeed, we've got a 58% lead in performance per unit power there. So uh, you know, across the board, these things are performing well and also offering TCO savings when it comes to acquisition costs and ongoing maintenance and utilization costs. So truly AMD is the industry leader when it comes to CPUs right now. Um, looking towards the infrastructure side of things where, where most customers are, are using um, these CPUs. If you look at virtualization for instance, in VMMark if you're doing the matched pair tests, you're seeing again a really strong performance story. So our previous generation CPUs, the, the 7002 series, deliver a significant performance uplift versus Intel's current generation, but the current generation from AMD blows that out of the water. We are both able to deliver more virtual machines, more tiles in this test, and each one of those tiles is faster. So both single core and multi-core advantage is just there. We're 52% faster on each of those tiles, and there are 71% more of them delivered by the Epic solution. So comparing current generation against current generation, there is no competition here. The, the AMD solution is the only way to go. That same story is carried on, but even stronger when it comes to vSAN. Um, so again, a 61% performance lead in this one. More tiles, more performance per tile, huge, huge performance gains here. And in fact, across the board in VMMark, when, it looks, when you look at virtualization workloads, we've got the best scores for overall vSAN. We've got the best scores for four node vSAN. We've got the best scores for two node vSAN. And indeed, those are kind of comparing top of stack products or kind of mainstream ones. When you look at the, the meat of the market, We've got a 32 core CPU here on the right hand side that delivers 25% more tiles per core. So our 32 core can deliver the same number of tiles at the same speed as Intel's flagship 40 core. We've got a really strong performance story going on here and it means you can get whatever you need from the AMD Epic stack in terms of performance. Really, really strong performance story. Now, looking at the total cost of ownership piece again, um, there's a lot of customers who are looking to refresh aged estates right now and aged inventory. Um, the example here takes a state of oh, a small cluster, 20 servers based on Broadwell, so they're about four years old thereabouts. Um, if you look at the current generation solution from Intel, you can get a particularly good um, improvement on that. So you can do that same uh, 20 socket workload in, uh, well, it's, sorry, it's a 40 socket workload in 14 sockets, so seven dual socket servers. You could do that same thing in five dual socket AMD servers. So the performance story from Intel is pretty good. From AMD, it's even better. The density that we can provide on these things is enormous. And indeed, the, the power efficiency savings that you're going to get and the lower um, administration, admi administration costs that you're going to see, these are all going to add kind of additional credence to the idea of, of buying an AMD CPU and truly being able to get the, the best performance out there. So it's not only a performance story here. There's total cost of ownership savings to be had across the board. Um, so that's pretty much the end of that. Um, we, like I say, we have the world's fastest server processors out there right now. We are powering the world's most impactful cloud services that you're using day to day. This is all whilst delivering outstanding business value and the confidence of modern security features. Um, so AMD, truly the industry leader here today, and hopefully that uh, gives you the confidence to go out and position these CPUs for your customers. Thanks very much for your time there.